Hello everybody, my name is Megan Hutchison, and welcome back to my Halloween costume playlist. In this mega episode today, we are going to be transforming three Value Village finds into something a little bit more steampunky. We will be turning a pair of pajama pants into bloomers, a plain overskirt into something a little more bustly, and we will be turning a long sleeve button down shirt into a short sleeve shirt. Feel free to skip ahead to your favorite points in the video. I've just put all the links up on screen so you can skip my boring rambling if you're not interested in one of them. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we're going to make is a pair of bloomers from pajama pants. Find where you want your bloomers to end and then how long you want the ruffle to be. Measure down twice the length of your ruffle on your pajama pants and make a mark on it all the way around. This is where you're going to end up cutting that off because we're going to fold the ruffle over in half in order to make the elastic channel. So just make a little line on that and cut it right out. Be sure when you make any cuts on your fabric to leave some room for a seam allowance. Next, we are going to turn our pajama pants inside out and turn in a little hem on the underside of that, just to make sure that it doesn't unravel on us. Next, fold your ruffle over on the edge there and pin it in place, just so it doesn't go anywhere. Now we're going to make a channel for the elastic to go in, so we are going to sew two parallel lines of straight stitches on either side of a channel wide enough for our elastic. So we're going to start with the outside one, making sure to catch that little hem that we did earlier. And when you make this top outside stitch, don't go all the way around. Leave a gap somewhere that you won't care if people happen to see a little bit of it. After you've finished making the outside row of stitches, go back uh, just over the width of your elastic and make a second row of straight stitches on the bottom side of the elastic channel. And you can go ahead and make this go all the way around. We don't have to worry about leaving a space to put the elastic through. The next step is going to be to thread our elastic through that channel. And the easiest way to do this is to pin one end of it just above the channel, and then to insert a safety pin into the end we're going to drag through. Holding the safety pin, push it through the hole and find it again with your fingers inside the channel and just sort of scooch the fabric down the elastic holding onto the safety pin. It just is very helpful to help you find where the end of that elastic is. Once you've reached the end of your channel, go ahead and pull the fabric in a ruffle shape so that you can have all of the end of the elastic out and pin it back onto itself. Then we're going to sew the two ends of the elastic firmly together. I didn't have any videos of this, but just crisscross a whole bunch of times back and forth just so it's really, really sound. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and slip stitch the end of the channel closed. And there you have it. One super easy pair of bloomers from one pair of thrift store pajama pants. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this nice lovely white long sleeve button down shirt and turn it into a short sleeve. Now I've seen lots of tutorials on this kind of thing online that just call for cutting it off right where you want the end of the sleeve to be. And if I were doing that I would be basically doing the same thing I am now by marking the pins on either side, but I wanted to do something different. I wanted to include that cuff at the end. So we're going to have a couple more steps a little further on. And once you've got your pins in place, marking where you want the end of your sleeve to be, go ahead and measure that from the underarm and from the top of the shoulder. And 
take a mental note or write it down and make sure that that measurement is the same on both sleeves. So we have an even sleeve height on both of them. And I had to do a little bit of adjustment here, so that's what you're seeing right now. The next step is going to be to draw a line straight across. You don't have to do this if you're good with eyeballing, but I find it very, very helpful. So just take your ruler or your measurement device of some sort and draw a little dashed line along there. I'm also going to add a one and a half centimeter wide seam allowance to that. Next, when we cut off the edge of the sleeve that we don't want, we'll be cutting along that seam allowance line. And save that sleeve piece. So because I wanted to keep that cuff and because I wanted it to go a little bit farther out than it started at, I'm making a pin mark where I wanted the cuff to be, how long I wanted that upturned cuff to be, and I'm making sure it's the same on both sleeves. And I drew a line across so that I knew where to cut. And we're also going to add a one and a half centimeter seam allowance to that one as well. This will become especially important later as I'm going to use an enclosed seam technique and they have to line up perfectly. Now since the slit in the cuff went farther along than I intended to cut, I'm just going to use a very simple whip stitch, just go over top one edge to the other side and sew that seam closed. and just continue that right to the end of the seam allowance. Then with your fingers kind of spread it open and you'll see it'll lay flat like that. Perfect. Now all you have to do is cut the end of the sleeve off at that seam allowance. When you have it cut to the right length, pin it inside your upper sleeve and at this point I noticed that I needed to ease the top edge of the sleeve. I needed to ruffle it a little bit so that it would go into the bottom part of the sleeve. So I just sewed a straight stitch along the top there. And I pinned the cuff right sides together inside of the top end of the sleeve. I started at the bottom seam and started working my way outwards right to where that easing point starts. a pin at the start and at the end of the easing point you can pull on the ends of that string and it'll make little ruffles nice little ruffles in the top half of the sleeve just keep pulling on both ends making sure that the ruffles are even until the circumference of the top sleeve lines up in size with that of the bottom sleeve then take your pins and pin it in place so those lovely ruffles don't go anywhere take my sewing machine and straight sew that seam closed but it didn't fit on the end of my sewing machine it was a bit too narrow so I'm just using a back stitch here it's a very sturdy hand stitch and it's great for creating these kinds of seams and there you have it sort of they're kind of ugly so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press that seam in the direction we want to fold it for the enclosure. In this case, that's towards the shoulder of my garment. Next, on that upper side of the seam allowance, we're going to cut a little bit off, just about halfway down the seam allowance to make that side a little bit narrower. We're doing this because we're going to fold the other portion of that over top of it and fold it under itself again, so we don't want it to be too bulky. There. 
Uh, now once you've got that folded under itself, pin it all the way around and once again make a line of straight stitches sewing all the way down that seam. And again, I'm just using back stitch here because it's the sturdiest, easiest hand stitch to accomplish this. And there you have it. The sleeve is firmly attached to the cuff and it fits perfectly. It's a little bit wonky on the seams, but I don't care. I may put a few extra accoutrements on the sides of the cuffs, maybe some sort of clasp to keep them standing up, but overall I'm very happy with how this shirt turned out. The final project we're going to be making is we're going to turn a normal skirt into something a little more steampunky. Now I'm just making this up, so it's not historically accurate in any means. Basically, uh, just pin it up behind your back in a bustle format, whichever way you want it to. I also had to include a safety pin so that it would fit my waist. And then off to the front. Now I'm going to have a drapey swag in the front supported by ribbon ties. So I lifted the edges up where I want them to hang, and I made chalk marks with my tailor's chalk in a line from the top of the skirt down to about where I want the ribbons to end. We're going to pin on our pieces of ribbon on these lines, and we're going to sew them all the way until the point where we want the bow. Here I used some tailor's tacks, which is basically a piece of obnoxiously colored thread tied in a little tiny knot, uh, to mark the places where I wanted those pins to be, because I needed to take them apart in order to pin on the ribbon. I'm using pretty skinny black ribbon. I don't remember exactly how wide it is, but it's fortunately just narrow enough that as soon as I pinned it on straight, I could just use a plain old zigzag stitch and cover almost the entire width of the ribbon. However, if you had a wider ribbon, I would probably recommend two lines of straight stitching, one down either side of the ribbon. And whichever method you choose, just keep going until the point where you want your bow to sit. You don't want to sew past that point, or it'll be hard to make the bow. And what you didn't see in this video is that I had to sew another ribbon onto the inside of the skirt for the other half of the bow, of course. And I just used hand stitching for that and sewed it on so that it was the same length when let down as the outside one fell to. And there you can see it's nice and straight, nice and flat. Perfect. And here's what it looks like bunched up. I think this turned out very well and I'm very pleased with it. Ta-da! I'm feeling very pleased with my base pieces for my steampunk vampire hunter costume so far. I still have a long ways to go in terms of accessories, but I'm very pleased that I've got all the basic pieces assembled. I hope you've had some fun with me learning how to sew these things together along the way, and I hope you'll join me again next time when I tackle something that I've never done before. Modifying a Nerf gun. Fun times.